playoffs, which I, I think is a very good sign. So I'm cheering for them. You know, they say year year of Harsom. That's the easy thing to say. I'm going to say the year of Mana. We'll see if Harsom gets some revenge for their DreamHack game, though. The DreamHack series did not go so well for the, uh, the Blue Protoss here. In the top left, though, as the Red Protoss, let's intro him first, as his probe is already on the way out. It is Liquid Mana. What you doing, little probie? What you doing? In the bottom right, as the Blue Protoss, we have a Team Liquid's Harsom. So, uh, yeah, team fight, actually. As it usually is when it comes to the Team Liquid guys. Alright, so, Mana, with that probe immediately being sent out, there really was only one option. If it was sent out after a pylon, there's some couple more options, but no, it was immediately sent out. It's going to proxy gateways. Now, once upon a time, this was kind of just like, okay, well. So, interesting. I was going to say that at one point in time, it was just the, the flower, the four gateway rush, and that can sometimes be a cheeky free victory. Then there were a couple of proxies that were literally just one or two gateway proxies, and then you can go into uh, Stargate afterwards. We saw that from Max Packs, and that was pretty interesting. I saw it work after not seeing it work, and I gotta tell you, when you see it not work, it looks kind of stupid. When you see it work, it looks genius. Anyways, this is something even in addition to those options. This is a proxy two gate with a cannon rush. Now, as soon as Harsom saw there were two probes, he knew he had to take a cannon rush threat seriously. There's not many other things you would do with two probes, really, except be bad, I guess. <laughs> and Mana's not bad. So he put a probe in the low ground. Now, Mana did something very correct here, which is that it, and, and unfortunately for Harsom, he kind of, you know, quote unquote, let it happen. But the pylon blocking not only blocks the probes from coming out to support the low ground or to take care of the low ground cannons, it also powers low ground cannons. If he had been forced to put his pylon here or here, the cannons actually don't get power. And that's um, something that Harsom kind of uh, did a little incorrect last time they face each other. So Mana is basically a hardcore cheat in this guy, right? Protosses always want to put their open pylon closest to their probes, so that if they have to block with a pylon, they can do it as quickly as possible. And that kind of take advantage is, it takes advantage of that. Mana just took advantage of Harsom and typical PvP shit. And unfortunately, while well, Harsom did pick up on the probe rush about as fast as possible, once he saw there were two probes, once he saw a pylon blocking him, he was like, wait a second, it still was a little bit too late. Uh, he had to kill that pylon or get his probes down to the natural or start, I mean, I actually don't even know, start to uh, building gateways and, and shield batteries farther back. Because with the probe still alive in the main base, that's the other problem. If you can get the main base probe, obviously the second probe is also locked out, so it's not a big of a deal. If you can just take care of all the probes in your main, you can actually play that game out a little bit. But if you don't, it's uh, really quite difficult. And even then, you know, even then, if your gateway goes down, they could bring more probes and, and more problems. And we didn't even get to talk about the Zealots. We didn't even get there. Didn't even. The Zealots are going to be on the way. The Stalkers, whatever was going to come out of those gateways, are going to eventually be on the way as well as Harsim is scrambling. So he just taps out. Why is a four gateway rush Recent called a flower? Received. I mean, it was Apparently the. You are doing something right, Captain. It's kind of just a dumb meme. Someone called it a flower, and um, people were like, "Oh my god, you're right." Because you would put the pylon in the middle, and then the four gateways would go on the outside of the pylon, and it would make like kind of a pretty decoration. Thank you, V Triple, for the thirty month resub. All right, very number. quick first game in the bottom left. We have Liquid Mana cheesing his teammate out. And it's up right as the Blue Bird also yeah, Harsom. Thank you, Leo MR Lima, for the tier one sub. Much appreciated for the commitment. So that's a. Uh, I, I've not seen it so aggressively placed, the forge and the double gateway. I think when Max Pax does it, he proxies the gateway, but then puts the forge at home. Um, so it's his second pylon that gets proxied. 
But that was just, you know, everything at once as fast as possible. You start to bank up quite a few minerals since you're not actually producing probes. You stop at 15 because for some reason the Protoss build order actually revolves around a slight supply block, not much you can do about it. And then you just don't build any probes after that, you just build all the structures, so very, very, very cheesy. A uh, bit more normal here. There might have also been a... I, I think sometimes Death Ore can be a map where you also have the faster Nexuses. The Nexus first, or the Gateway Nexus. It can be one of the maps, like Pillars of Gold, where you see that more commonly. And if that had been the case, then Mana probably wins even harder, I'd imagine. But you can see it worked out against the more typical PvP. Ice and Chrome does not lend itself to those earlier Nexus at all. Uh, you are expecting two gateways to the front of each other's bases. Which is what Harsim sees, and now Harsim's got to be checking for that second pylon, which we know is not going to be placed back at home. All you have to do is compare it to your own second pylon. If it's not on the way, it's somewhere else. But as always, tricky thing about PvP is, well, do I know he's using it or don't I? Harsim doesn't know he's not using it. He's going to try and find it. He's going to try and find the pylon, but it's going to take a while. So Harstum, unfortunately, has to... I mean, he he has to take a risk. I mean, I think if he goes for an Oracle first, he's taking the appropriate risk. Uh, if this was a proxy Stargate, and he went for two Adepts, and then goes immediately into his own Oracle and no shield battery, and an Oracle pops out here, it could be dangerous, because he only has one, two Stalkers at most, right? And that also actually happened in their Max series on this map, so... Sure, the flashbacks are coming, but it's not. It's not a proxy Stargate, and he finally gets to confirm that, so that's really nice. So he can now comfortably go into an Oracle first. He can also send his Stalker out to take care of stuff if he would like. Now, it's possible the Mana's also going for a one base Stargate back at home. Maybe put it here, for instance, but unlikely. Person's probe was in there for a very long time, and uh, well, even if it was, there's a certain amount of grace period that is allowed before you have to really worry about an oracle if it's not being proxied. For Mana, he saw a later Nexus, and unless you go back up in there and see like a third gateway, the later Nexus and the non-committed... Oh, he misses it! Ooh, that's a big deal. Oh, but Harsum... Wait, what? Ah! ah opportunity missed! What? That was awkward. Okay, I think something went down there that was kind of awkward. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, Oracle swoops in and finds five units in total. I don't think it can really dance around here. One of that century really bad, but gliding wasn't quite powerful enough. Um, okay, anyways. So I was trying to say... Uh, is... What was I trying to say? <laughs> uh, oh, the later Nexus, that's right. So the later Nexus usually says Stargate. If it is like a three gate or a proxy robo, you could be in trouble, but... I think Mono was able to determine that it wasn't. So, I think Harsum assumed that there were too many units around to head in with the Adepts. Because it can be kind of problematic. If the Adepts don't actually get close to the mineral line, it might not be worth... And this actually... This is a really good example. Thank you very much, Harsum. If the sentries didn't die, this would not have been worth it for Harsum, right? But if the Adept had been able to get here, or here and actually target fire the probes, then the then the warp, the Shaden is worth it, right? So I think what happened was that he like could have gotten in, but when he did, he was like, oh, I'm pretty far away from the probe line, I guess I shouldn't do this. And then was like, oh wait, maybe I should, because I don't see any units right now, and well, it was kind of an awkward kerfuffle. So at least the next Adept Shade did grab him a sentry, which really is quite good. It's 100 gas and a hallucination, it's out. It also could have been a force field in a different type of game, but as we can see on the mini-map, both players are going for third bases, production tab, both blink, both plus one. We are heading into a macro game, so the force field is probably not as important. But scouting is very important. Harsum gets kind of free scouting with the Oracle, and uh, if he is really still concerned about his scouting, he can definitely send his own hallucination. There you go. And Mana has a bunch of hallucinations as well. So they can get an idea of what they're both doing. Third Nexus, the third Nexus, but then seeing a Forge. I talked I a lot this, about this a lot in the last PvP I was casting. I mean, a Forge just generally denotes macro. It's something that you're investing in for like a minute, minute and a half. So you have at least that long to worry about an attack. 
So, Mana sees Harsim's Forge. Harsim sees Mana's Forge. Um, without a Forge, even with his third Nexus, that's exactly what Rail did, actually. In the last PvP I was casting, he didn't get a Forge. He cranked out two Immortals, and he did, like, a big ol' Link Soccer attack with no Forge, no upgrade on the way. That's something you could be worried about. If you see all these things, a third Nexus, a plus one, um, a Robo being built, you know, and not already done or whatever, like, it... The attack's probably not going to be on the way. It's not going to be a very dedicated attack. It's going to be a Blink Soccer attack, which you also have your own Blink, and the number is probably not going to be so lopsided that you lose a Blink battle at this point, considering how even the game has really been. Mana did get a faster Nexus and didn't take much probe damage, but it uh, looks like Harsom's actually jumped back a little bit more in the income. Very close overall, though, as you can see. On the sides, that's how much mineral difference there is. So, you get a macro game. Complete different. 180 from the last game. Robo on the way much faster for Mana. As well as Charge and an Immortal. The Immortals might get less important as time goes on, but honestly, even if we go into pure Disruptor battles, sometimes it does still come down to who has the better fighting force. Sans Disruptors, they all go explodey, and then what you're left with. Well, an Immortal or two could help out against what is mostly just the Stalkers left over. But you don't usually want to get that many Immortals. Harsum kind of going ditto on the Immortal, but still no Robotics Bay production. There we go. Robotics Bay now here. Second Robo should be built as well. Very, very even on the workers, on the army, on the third base timings. The plus two, pretty identical. Harsum later to the Robotics Bay is going to have less Disruptors. And he's not going to have charge lots, which uh, definitely help when it comes to the run buys and harassment. But also can help in some unique scenarios for the engagements. He is, however, going to have a Dark Shrine a bit faster. So that obviously can very much still help with the harassment. And also sometimes with the engagements. Once you could talk about DT Blink, we've seen um, at this point a, a handful of games where DTs with Blink actually jump on top of Disruptors. And it kind of affects the outcome of the battle. Some differences finally happening here. So with Harsom still only on one Robo, he's not dedicating nearly as many resources into Disruptors, which means it's got to be dedicated somewhere else because it's not exactly getting like that much faster before there are that many more workers. Up, up by five now, but yeah, the resources are going into a larger Starker count, one more Immortal, and uh, maybe additional Gateways? No, no, just more Stalker Warpins. Actually, six Gateways for both players. Is that really what you want to be at? I'm actually asking. I've never paid attention that much before. So much of the emphasis, yes, is on Disruptors, but I just, you know, they're going up to four bases, so I'm like, hmm, maybe they go up to ten or nine? Uh, okay, Mana's up to nine. And a third Robo, which I really like. Um, yeah. I kind of feel like in uh, PvP, it can sometimes... Similar ideas to a TVT. You know, in a TVT, it's not exactly normal to get a third factory, but you can. If you're going to be on four or five bases, you could go into a third factory, so... Oh my god! Oh, I thought he wasn't paying attention, and I don't think he was until the last second, but... Whoo, okay. Uh, but yeah, identical, uh, similar for a third Robo. You don't have to get a third Robo, but you can. So, one Disruptor gets popped easily. Hello! Second one was uh, a target, but goes for the Sentry instead and blinks out. Both of them had warped in a couple of DTs. Uh, Harsom's was found. Mana actually does get across the map. Mm, Harsom has some really good vision, by the way. He's got units dotting around, or stasis traps, actually. He's all not got a DT single one. Not going to want to take care of a cannon and a shield battery. Not so hardcore on the harassment yet, but as the game goes on, we kind of know where this goes now. We've become very intimate with PvP over the last couple of months, right? We could have 20 DTs with Blink running around. It's, it's possible. That might be for a little later on. Oh, that was a good shot right there, even popping the Immortal Shields. Are some a little bit too late to the reaction. I think y'all maybe Blink on cooldown a little bit late as well. That's, uh, that's painful. Stasis Trap is going to see it. Oh, there's a lot of see it. <laughs> that doesn't actually get anything. Horsten moving on to a Fleet Beacon is kind of bold of him. 
He finally added on a second uh, Robo, but really hasn't been building that many Disruptors, so only at three. I think, you know, it, it's a it's a risk, it's a gambit. And he's gonna try and take a, a risky strategy and a, approach to the late game and just go right for the Fleet Beacon. But that could be extremely dangerous. I mean, you do kind of anticipate some type of lock where no one can really push into each other in PvP when you just have so many disruptors, but eventually Mana's poking and prodding should reward him at least enough information or a big enough opportunity to actually push forward. And if at that point Harsum is investing into three carriers, well, that's a lot of resource, a lot of supply that's not actually helping at this exact moment. So we'll see if that, that happens. Uh, it's possible it doesn't. But Mana, the more that there is non-action, the more that not much is happening, the more Mana should also feel inclined to add Stargates, and the more he should be worried that his opponent is doing that too. I think Mana is still kind of thinking more so about the mid-game. Three more observers on the way to cover his bases, but also probably to add on to his own just uh, DT charge on attacks. Ooh, good disruptor shot on the left side. Soccer battle going favorably for Harsom on the right side as well, because he has Immortals involved in the mix, and this side actually is going very well for Harsom. That is because a lot of Mana's army supply is over to the top left. Single Immortal, a couple of DT is going to hit into Harsom's fourth base as Mana drags the army all the way over to the right side. Recalls most of the Stalkers out, but Harsom has an almost equally sized army to the left. So that is actually not going to be much success there. But despite some losses, despite Harsom now having the bigger bank, also because he has a hell of a lot more probes, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to even out, right? It's going to be like, okay, then now what? Still talking about six disruptors to eight. Another almost freebie, almost freebie. Upgrades very even. Committal to plus one shield for both parties for the Sockers, Disruptors, and perhaps for the later Stargate battles, which of course Harsum is already uh, ready and willing to go into. He's also grabbing plus one on the 7x4. This is going to get a little awkward fast. Sockers on the right side, blink forward aggressively. Left side, Disruptors from Mana actually being zoned out by Harsum's Disruptors. So I think Mana was hoping that it was a little more of a collapse in, a little more of a surround, but didn't quite work out that way. The rest of his army is coming back. His Disruptors are coming over to help his fifth base as well, and Harsum's not really going to be able to push in, but you know, if Harsum actually does continue to bully Mana back more successfully, that might be when he plans on going into Tempest, is the choice. But this has turned a little awkward. Good concave from Mana. Harsum just recalls out, but these, these units, yeah, uh, disruptors are going to die. So the reason I said carriers first earlier on um, is not because carriers are actually that ideal in PvP, but because we do see it sometimes when it comes down to the riskier calls, the I'm going to try and get so far ahead of you in this in this area, in this pacing of a PvP, I'm going to try and actually get to carriers, which if you surprise someone with six carriers, I think it's a little more devastating than surprising them with six Tempest, which are slower shooting and more tactical in their approach. But if you do go for carriers and they actually were going to go for Tempest, they're also kind of keeping pace with you, then you done mess up because Tempests are supposed to be better than carriers as long as they're in position and have a revelation to help them out. So, the Tempests are usually the way you see, you see things go in PvP. Tempest for Tempest battles could happen here in this game if Mana hurries up and get there. You gotta actually get there though, that's a bit of a problem. This engagement goes pretty well for Mana. I mean, he's killing a lot of Harsim stalkers, but it's a bit disingenuous. I mean, Harsim's not really focused so much on this portion of the game. He's trying to build up his Tempest count. At three, that's actually not that intimidating if Mana has a lot of army, and he certainly does. 30 more supply right now, even taking care of the last few stalkers on their retreat. But up at six or nine, then yeah, the Tempests are going to be scary. And now uh, he's about to be up to six. So, Mana, I still don't think he knows about this, man. He's warped in so many DTs, he's got his observers covering all of his uh, bases and his armies, and that's great for mid-game, but Harsum, uh, feels like he's beaten him to the late game. Not just in Tempest, by the way, either. Like, he's always had a bigger worker count, which we've seen in the past couple of months really is what you're supposed to do in PvP. If you're in this type of PvP, you're talking about very, very high worker counts. Upwards to 91 is actually not that surprising. And here come the Tempest. Big investments that are about to pay off and a whole lot of stalkers as Mana realizes, uh-oh, I'm a little bit late to that party. He's going to try and use his mobility against the Tempest to buy time or just deal damage, basically. And it does, again, kind of reflect on TVT a little bit, too. In TVT, if someone gets a Viking Liberator, you can try and beat them. You can try and get there as well, but it's very difficult to do. Or you can try and use your gigantic Marine Ball to catch them out of position 
and take care of their army and their economy. And that's kind of Mana's only choice right now. Does he even have a Stargate? He does not. No Stargate, no Fleet Beacon. If he gets a Stargate, he's going to have to get three of them immediately and then just hope to buy a hell of a lot of time, but it doesn't seem to be happening. Mana, I think, just lost out. I mean, Harsum was preparing this Tempest thing for a while. And uh, has found success in it so far. He's definitely pushing Mana back home. Mana's trying to get some uh, kills here. Good disruptor shot. And he's going to try and take out the mothership as well. Plus three stalkers. And no joke. Grab the mothership. A couple of weak tempests as well. And Harsum's left side base is now under attack. Emergency DT warping. The observer looks like it's been kicked off because, yeah, there's a billion cannons. So while Mana's been pretty good about having observers with this harassment force, it just, you know, it's hard to control. We're also controlling this army off to the right. Harsum has the uh, technological advantage, but the Tempest still have to be very careful. They are glass cannons. They are going to die as soon as they kind of go over this ridge. It's exactly what Mana's trying to force. He's actually saying, you know, come to me. I know you're going to take forever to clear out this army because Tempest don't deal damage that fast. So I'm going to receive you, basically. And if you push into me, that's when I actually get some victories. Actually snipes the Oracle as a priority there. Gets a Disruptor as well. And eventually we'll be cleaned up, but that means that Mana's other army, the one that was waiting to receive those Tempests, actually goes into Harsum's third or fourth, whatever this would have been, uh, and might get a nice snipe there. It's pretty much mined out, and I'm not sure the snipe is actually possible anymore. Uh, we'll see. Disruptor's not going to find too much. And I think this has been kind of the uh, opportunity miss a little bit there as the Tempests now uh, arrive. That's what I was looking for. It's not... Tempest has arrived. It's Carrier has arrived. That's why I got tripped up. Which, um, you know, again, speaking of any capital ships, Mana still has zero zilch, nothing. No fleet beacon. Uh, eventually, Harsum's army is just the better army. Very much like TVT, like the Viking Liberator Raven. You know, that that's the better army. If they get into battle cruisers, yeah, that's the better army, even if you can maybe outposition it for a little while. So, while Mon is doing an excellent job controlling the game right now, I'm still really worried for him. Because even if he does take out, let's say, Harsum's two bases or 40 probes or what have you, the army is still going to be complicated, if it's all together at least. If the Tempests are alone, uh, okay, it's not that much of a problem. But if the Tempests are with the Archons and the Disruptors, then, you know, he's always going to have more potential with the army. Harsum's going to have more potential with his army. Mothership, I don't think you actually want to take that fight. Not alone. <laughs> yep, she agrees. Harsum was pushing into a uh, would-be sick base, though, so he's trying to pay attention over there. And unfortunately, wasn't paying attention quite fast enough. Disruptor is getting two fantastic shots. One on top of the Disruptors. Another one on top of a lot of Archons and Stalkers. And Mana is doing a brilliant job with the ground army. Who needs air when you are liquid Mana? Still attacking off to the left side as well. And given the opportunity, trying to clear out some of the static defense. Mana is also going to uh, maybe invest into more harassing units. Something that actually pounds top of the Stalkers. Or the, sorry, cannons. Besides the Stalkers. As his bank is something, it's actually pretty credible. 3,000 minerals, over 3,000 gas, and taking some pretty okay trades here and there, right? A quick check on that seems, uh, yep, yeah, he is taking the better trades, but not by too much. Harrison's gonna add in something that actually does a little bit more damage. The problem with those Tempests, right, is that they're, you know, tacti tactically, they're superior. Uh, that, you know, they get the revelation to help out with them. Suddenly, they gotta be able to use that range. If they're one-shotting big, strong units like a mothership or a carrier, they're fantastic. But if they're still taking care of like many little things, little ants on the ground, then a tempest, uh, they they do the push. They have the power, like we saw right here. Actually, we saw that. But yeah, they can be outmaneuvered, they can't really do things on their own, and it's not really threatening if one jumped on top of you. They one-shot one of your stalkers and you retreat. Carriers, especially if they have plus two upgrades, and that's plus two or three, that's plus three actually, that actually rips and tears and shreds the stalkers, um, and is truly the superior army. So Harsum continuing to do that. As he struggles to get up another base, he is still mining somewhat reliably on his initial five, six bases, so it's not problematic yet. This also might mean that the carriers can help defend a location, while the uh, rest of the army does something else. Because that is kind of Harsum's problem right now. He's not been uh, able to do what Mon has been doing, which Mon has been able to, to push and pull him left, right, in the center of stalkers or disruptors, or, you know, he's just been getting these better trades. But Harson is getting two. 
Can't emphasize this enough. The better army. We even got some shields finishing up. Already on plus three shields, plus three attack. Getting some armor for his air, uh, air as well. Mana finally adds on a couple Stargates and his three beacon. So we are going to get to the Supreme late game. I love that he's still microing these uh, stalkers over here, by the way. Like, the charge shots were really obnoxious to micro against when you have the other rest of the game going on. Um, I just want to say that's, that's really impressive, but he is doing it <laughs> while also trying to control the right side. But I take that back. Mana actually goes from the right side over to the left side. Oh, oh my god, barely gets that disruptor. Are you kidding me? Oh, the retarget. He's going to go after the Tempest, but wait, you know what? I can get that disruptor. Oh, that was a very clutch play right there. But even if he had lost like 10 stalkers, he still has so damn many. Actually consolidating his army over to the left was a big surprise there for Harsim, who had started to get used to splitting his army up. He was finally getting to a point where he could with the carriers helping out and uh, almost got all of his Tempest taken because he was so split, because he had lost track of the army a little bit, but still saves three of them. Now, until we get into actual Tempest Wars, like, the Tempest numbers might not be that problematic, but if we do get into Tempest Wars, if Mana also has his own Tempests, ooh, then the whole carrier versus Tempest dynamic of them I've been building up, I've been explaining, suddenly is very, very, very important. So, ooh, Harsim has gotten a long time not having to deal with other capital ships, but that time is now gone. And I don't think he's realized, yeah, you know, the actual harassment, um, how to say, like, it, it hasn't really dug into bases. It's been mostly surface level, taking care of static defense or forcing mist, uh, mist splits, I guess, right? It's not really been getting into the main production line technology or anything like that. I'm trying to say the harassment hasn't really done a lot of scouting. Uh, for necessarily either player, which is why Mana had so long where he didn't know Tempest were on the way, and now Harsom also does not know that Mana is going to have Tempest very, very soon. Harsom does find a lot of the Disruptors, takes them out pretty easily with the Carriers, but is about to be uh, backstabbed by the Stalkers. Or at least that was Mana's idea, but oh, I think the real backstab is the appearance of these Tempests going right after the Carriers. A recall is going to be used as Harsom realizes this is a very awkward scenario for him. The recall is mostly good. This is a couple of units. A Carrier also goes down. But he saves a lot of his capital ships, but he's got to go back into Tempests. Um, the weird dynamic with Tempests and Carriers is that if the Carriers have their Interceptors on top of your Tempest, then, okay, the Carriers probably win. But the uh, situation, the ideal, is that it never happens. The Tempests are already running away from your Carriers, while also, ideally, the Tempest being up in the, uh, what, six or seven, I think, one shot to Carrier? I'm not sure about the upgrades, but... Yeah, the idea is that you get in a Tempest, you keep out of range, you one-shot the carriers, and there's not much the carrier guy can do. The carrier guy just runs after you and dies slowly. So Harsom needs to account for that. His upgrades are very good for his air, but I'm not sure that's going to be matter as much as the Tempest abusing their range, as you can see. Well, one for one of the Tempests, now one for two in favor of Mana. Also keeping track of the ground, since we're not talking about pure air war quite yet. Whoever wins the ground, uh, if it is that one-sided, could possibly also take care of the air. Both maxed out. Harsom finally getting this base up. Mana has had this for a little while, but actually not too much longer than his opponent. A little bit of harassment here and there. Harsom does not have uh, as big of a bank, though, so you need to be careful about that. A very aggressive blink forward. With no pushback from the Disruptors, an aggressive blink forward from Harsom, actually, as the Disruptors of Mana, I guess, were on cooldown. He grabs a lot of those Tempests, and uh-oh, the Carriers showing their strength right there. The blink forward was fantastic, but also the Carriers actually got into that range, and you can see the Interceptors just simply tor they tore apart the Tempest. It happens pretty quickly when it does finally happen. Now Mana's, uh, I was gonna say, what is he gonna rededicate into? It is gonna be more Tempest, and also a bit of a base tray. DT's on top of Harsom's uh, seventh, I can't count anymore. Too many bases to count. That is a fresh, much needed base of Harsom as he is running out of minerals to mine from. But Mana's also losing all of his fresh bases. We are into full base raid territory, but no one's quite on top of production yet. And production's going to be absolutely critical. We're talking about disruptors potentially saving the day or emergency carriers saving the day. The emergency tempests are literally what Mana is hoping will save the day for him as Harsom's army is just a little bit too intimidating right now. But the base trade really is in full swing. Who reaches the main base first? Who reaches the actual production first? So far, neither one of them has. But Mana, what is he going to go for? He's not going to go into the production. He's actually going to retreat. Is that the right call? I'm not sure. 
Uh, he's also got probes off to the left side. Still a lot of bank, a lot of nexus to throw down. We're not talking about real base race yet. We're not talking about who's going to have the last building. A stasis trap catching a couple stalkers could be a really big deal in the future. I like that one state. The one stalker in front to pop a stasis trap. And I guess these also got kind of caught in the mix. Uh, was pretty clever. Where are those Tempests? Oh, there are so many of them. Nine Tempests, but they need to keep out of the Interceptor range. Nine Tempests, eight Tempests to six carriers. Uh, not all getting a single shot off. I may actually kind of learn what does one shot a carrier here. Uh, oh, apparently it is nine Tempests. So nine Tempests would have one shot the carrier? Damn, that is so many more than I thought it was going to be. All right, well, that's why I don't play late game PvP. But anyways, uh, we're at 9. We're at 10, actually, as the last one pops out. Mana's continuing to use the leftover bank that he had accrued over the last couple of minutes to build three more Tempests on top of that. Harsom has about 48 Reasons workers that are mining not a too ideally. You got uh, oversaturation captain. here. Minerals, but no gas there. And a Nexus that does seem like it's going to be cancelled very, very soon here. So Harsom might have workers, but not a lot of mining. Mana has neither mining nor workers. <laughs> like, he's just down to his original three bases. That's not going to look so hot. Tempest, uh, yeah, we're going to take cancel there. Um, this is where Revelation also would be really ideal, just to make sure you don't get pounced upon, to make sure your Tempest have the range to tackle those carriers. But I think the numbers have just grown too large. 13 Tempests, so the three of them are reinforcing. Now down to 12. One shot in the carriers, however, and that's a really big deal. But Harsom has a lot of stalkers that are trying to chase after this. 22 stalkers for Harsom. Disruptors for Harsom as well, trying to catch Manas, but not quite able to do so. But more being thrown out. An aggressive blink forward from Mana as this Tempest win the air war. And I think the stalkers on the ground are going to win the ground war enough anyways for the Tempest to clean everything up. And Harsom, I think, is about to be O2'd. But what a damn game this has been. This has been uh, every aspect of PvP you could really think of has happened. Every, I guess, uh, showcasing of, of the strengths and weaknesses of each type of style, each, each decision has really been shown in almost 30 minute PvP, but it ultimately ends up in Mana's victory. He's got 30 more army supply, and uh, his ground army is just as intimidating as Hearthstone's. 22 stalkers to 21. Uh, with equal upgrades, but Mana has seven Tempests. So even if they're being targeted down, that means Mana Stalkers are killing Harsom. If Harsom goes after the Stalkers, then the Tempests are killing. So, you know, it's a, there's no winning here. <laughs> it, is a, it is a math problem right now. Mana has more units. Harsom not willing to give up yet, and I don't blame him, because maybe the Tempests do kind of go awkwardly over a ledge or... I don't know, something basically that, right? Because Harson doesn't have anything else. Harson didn't start this base race off with as much of a bank, so he can't really be replacing a lot of disruptors. One last hurrah, but one disruptor doesn't get very much. Second one not going to get very much, and even some DTs getting a lot of swipes. Even with an observer coming in, it's just too much. Mana takes the 2-0. Well freaking played. Thank you, Hurt1, for the 16 months. And thank you, Iced Coffee, for the seven months.